In this video, we're going to go over taking a schematic component uh, that consists of layout elements or transmission line elements like this, uh, converting it to a layout in ADS, and then simulating the layout using an electromagnetic simulator rather than a traditional schematic-based simulator. So the first thing we need to do is take our hybrid coupler and we're going to generate a layout from the coupler. So if we go up here to the layout dropdown, and we go to generate update layout, it'll pull a window up. It looks something like this. And generally we can leave this window to all the defaults. Click OK, and it's going to generate the layout view for us. So here you can see the coupler layout that we would expect. Remember, we had the launches into the coupler, the branch line or quadrature hybrid coupler uh, itself. Uh, it consisted of transmission lines of 50 ohm impedance and quarter wavelength for the vertical segments, and lambda by two uh, and uh, quarter wavelength and 50 ohms divided by root two for these horizontal segments. Now, if we've done everything correctly, put the ports on in the schematic, then the port should be imported as well. Here we can see port one is going in here. Port two is going, or port four is going in here. And then in the upper right corner will be port two, and in the upper, in the lower right corner will be port three. So this is input, isolation, through, and coupled in the parlance of the coupler. Now here we have a, a coupler structure that's going to exist on two layers. Uh, we have the uh, coupler itself, which is on the conductor layer. Uh, and then uh, below this, uh, there is going to be a ground plane or a return plane. Uh, for the uh, RF signal. So that would typically be a solid copper pour, uh, so we don't see that here. We can add that explicitly uh, in some designs, but what we're going to do right now is simulate this as if it was just a two layer with a perfect ground plane right below it. All right, in order to do that, we need to first create a substrate. So here I've got a substrate that I've defined. I want to go through actually creating one from scratch. So we'll call this substrate two, and we're going to make it based upon a two layer FR4 board. And we can create the substrate. All right. So here's our substrate. Uh, we have uh, two air boundaries two conducting boundaries, uh, and then two layers of FR4. Now, remember, we only need one layer of FR4. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, first uh, is delete one of these FR4 layers. And then we're going to We're going to delete the bottom conductor layer, the bottom, and we're going to insert a cover. And delete that air layer. Now the cover, we're going to make copper. And we're going to assume that our PCB has one ounce copper, which generally equates to 1.4 mils thickness. So I've just done that by clicking on that copper layer or on that metal layer and changing it. Now this is a cover, uh, which means that it's infinite and in width and length. We have an FR4 layer. We've been claiming that this FR4 layer is 19 mils thick in our schematic based simulations. So we should have that map uh, or match. Uh, we have a via here that goes between the, the uh, top conducting layer and that perfect ground plane. Now, our structure doesn't use any vias, so this won't matter. Uh, so we can either leave this here since we're not using any, or we could or, or we could delete it if we wanted to. I'm just going to leave it in place. 
And finally, we have the conductor layer. And remember, that was on the COND layer from the layout. So the conductor layer is that kind of brown color here, COND. We're going to map that. We know that that conductor is generally going to be copper. And we also know that it's going to generally be one ounce copper, which is 1.4 mils thick. And we can leave everything else the same. If you know that your metal has a different etching profile uh, than is uh, drawn, you can change the uh, etching profile. So here you can see if I change it to 45 degrees, the edges of the metal are 45 degree angles. We're going to leave our metal as perfectly vertical. All right, so there's our substrate defined. We're going to go ahead and save that. So we've got perfect, uh, uh, we've got a, a, a cover below the layer where our coupler is going to be and then the air above it. So this is a, a microstrip structure. So we'll save that. We're gonna go back to our layout. Now we already have ports defined. So what we need to do is set up an EM simulation. We're going to go in here uh, to the uh, uh, EM setup for simulation, uh, which is uh, this icon uh, that just says EM on it. It'll pull up a window. So it tells you the cell we're gonna be simulating is hybrid coupler. That's of course what our cell was called. Uh, it will give you a choice of substrates. We're going to use that substrate two that we just defined. Our ports were all defined as single-ended ports. Uh, we're not gonna get into port setup, but you can have, you can actually change the port so that they're differential if you wanted to. So for instance, you could have the reference or uh, for port one be port two. Uh, here we're going to use uh, all the ports as single-ended, which means that the positive terminal is the port name and the negative terminal will just be ground. You can see a bit more about the ports. They're all on the conductor layer. So it tells you the layer that they're on the name of the port, uh, and then whether they're a drawing and then their location on the layout, uh, if you're interested. For frequency plan, there are a couple of different options here. We can do linear sweeps, uh, where uh, if we do a linear sweep, uh, we give it a start and stop frequency and a number of points uh, or a step size, uh, and it'll calculate a number of points, and then it will do a simulation of every one of these points. Uh, that can be fairly time consuming. A logarithmic sweep is a similar concept, start and a stop range, number of points, and then it'll go through and do all those points. We could do a single point. So if we had a single frequency that we wanted to run this at, we could do that. But we're going to use the adaptive sweep. We give it a start and a stop range and a number of points, and the simulation is going to run until it converges uh, to where it can extrapolate um, uh, a, a, a model across the full frequency range. Now, sometimes, uh, and, and we're going to give it a maximum number of points to simulate, uh, in this case, 50 points. So if it gets to 50 points and still can't extrapolate a model, uh, it'll tell you that uh, it, it couldn't do that uh, and it ran 50 points uh, in the meantime. Uh, you can, of course, make this longer if your structure is complicated uh, so, that, uh, so that you can run more points. Now, we can also, if we have a specific point that we really want to make sure that we hit, we could add a single point, for instance, and make sure, say, we're designing this at 3 gigahertz. Let's make sure we hit exactly 3 gigahertz. Okay. Now, our, our coupler is designed at 3 gigahertz, so the adaptive from 0 to 10 gigahertz uh, is going to be fine. It's a regular structure, so we probably don't need to run this uh, single point, uh, but we'll go ahead and leave it in here just so that uh, you can see what happens. And what's gonna happen is it will generally start at the low frequency, do the simulation, start at the high frequency, do the simulation, then do the single point, and then it'll start doing its adaptive algorithm to, make, to, to try and fit a model to everything. Um, we can tell it what to output. Uh, so if we wanted to open up a data display, we can tell it to do that. We can tell it what the data display should look like. I'm gonna leave these as default for the time being. Uh, in terms of options, uh, I typically like to change the mesh. So options, mesh, cells per wavelength. I typically like to use 30 cells per wavelength. Um, so we'll see what the mesh looks like in just a moment. And I also like to use an edge mesh where it's going to uh, automatically determine the edge width that it needs. Now we can change uh, uh, a few other things in here, but for the most part, you don't need to change any of these things. 
for your mesh, you can make it layer specific. So if you have different metal, if you wanted to do a different mesh on the ground plane than you do on the conductor plane, you can do that. Uh, and there are generally reasons to do those kinds of things, but for the time being, we're going to leave it as is. And most of the other things in here, we can just leave on there and leave alone. Now, one other thing I'll say is uh, for the simulation, we have a couple of different things that we can do. We can do just a standard EM simulation, or we can do a co-simulation, which would be embedded in a, a schematic uh, simulation, uh, or we can do uh, momentum RF. Uh, uh, in each of these options, we can do a momentum RF simulation, a momentum micro simulation, or a finite element method simulation. Now, uh, momentum microwave is uh, what they call a 2.5D uh, full EM uh, simulation, so it's a full wave simulation. Uh, that's what we're going to leave it on uh, for now. Momentum RF is kind of a truncated version of the full wave uh, solution given by momentum microwave, uh, and it's used uh, uh, as a trade-off between accuracy and speed. Uh, if you need a fast simulation, don't care as much about accuracy, you can run uh, momentum RF. It isn't to say that the accuracy is bad, it's just that it's going to be lesser than uh, the momentum microwave, and you're also not going to get all of your uh, field calculations uh, at the end. Uh, and if you need a full 3D simulation, you can use the finite element method uh, simulation. We're going to leave it at momentum microwave for the time being. Now, when all of this is done, you can save this setup, close it, and if you want to run the simulation, you can just click the uh, sprocket here uh, that says EM, and it will run. I've already run the simulation once uh, just to make sure everything was set up, uh, which is why it gave me that option there. So now you can see what it's doing. It's going to generate a mesh. You can see the mesh that it generates, and basically what it does in this mesh is it calculates the current in the mesh and the fields due to the current uh, to every other cell in the structure, uh, and you can kind of see as we look at the mesh, what that edge mesh does, you can see it makes a, a smaller mesh, and this is trying to uh, uh, more accurately account for skin effect in the metal, uh, which would be important at higher frequencies. You can see that the structure is fairly regular, and so the mesh looks regular. We have basically just gridded rectangles. The only place that we see any deviation from that is around discontinuities like this bend here. Uh, you can see that it has to do some interesting things with the mesh in order to account for the bend. But other than that, it's a pretty regular mesh. All right, at this point, the simulation's running. We can take a look at what uh, at what it does. You can see the first thing that, it, uh, that the simulation is generally going to do is do the mesh, and then it is going to start doing the frequency sweep. So here it started at DC, zero hertz. Now it's doing point number two, which is the three gigahertz. I believe the next point will be 10 gigahertz. Yeah, here it goes with 10 gigahertz. And then what it's going to start doing is an adaptive sweep between the frequencies of zero and 10 gigahertz. Again, trying to uh, pick frequencies uh, and solutions that will help it to converge to uh, a model uh, quicker. All right, while this is running, we can look at the layout again. Uh, if you want to stop the simulation for any reason, you find that you uh, you messed something up and you want to make a change, uh, you can click the uh, sprocket with a, an X through it. That'll stop the simulation. Um, and, and uh, of course, you can change your port definitions, you know, all those kinds of things. All right, so we're going to wait just a few moments um, as it runs. So you can see it just finished the 10 gigahertz solution, uh, and it's starting the adaptive simulation uh, with a new point, uh, 7.67 gigahertz. Uh, you can see that it's got 0% of the frequency range covered, uh, and so it's going to keep adding points until it can cover the full frequency range uh, and fit a model uh, to the points that it has, uh, that has that it's, that it's actually simulated and it's just going to do this for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it. I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when the end result is finished. All right, well the simulation finished. Uh, you can uh, actually look at the results and see that it actually took 23 uh, points in order for the simulation to converge. So that's well under the 50 uh, that we had hoped for. Uh, you can see it'll tell you that the, the frequency range was covered 100% and the simulation's done and generally it'll pop up a window. 
Now in the window, we can see a couple of things. So remember, this is a hybrid coupler. We expect the ports to be well matched. So we expect S11 to be uh, generally less than uh, the, uh, sorry, dB of S11 generally to be less than minus 10 dBs. Uh, at the design frequency, you can see our design frequency is three gigahertz. Now you can see that, yes, uh, it, it is less than minus 10 dBs. Uh, but you can also see that uh, the design has shifted a little bit as we've done the EM simulation. So we would have to compensate for this uh, by modifying the structure a little bit if we wanted to recenter the design at three gigahertz. Now, what you see uh, in the simulation are the blue curve, which is the fitted model. And you see the red points are the actual simulation points that were run. We would expect S22 and S33 and S44 to look very similar. Indeed, if we look at them, they're all on the uh, top row here. You can see that they do. So the structure is well matched uh, to 50 ohms at 3 gigahertz. Now, we know that the coupling should be minus 3 dBs. Uh, here we see that uh, we're somewhere around minus three and a half dBs for S21. This is the through port. Uh, and we're somewhere around minus three and a half dBs for S31. This is the couple port. So we're fairly well balanced here. Uh, you can see a little bit of imbalance. Again, if we wanted to, we could tune the structure to try and restore that to being a bit better. And we expect the isolation S41 uh, to be pretty high. Indeed, our isolation at three gigahertz uh, is, is, is pretty high, uh, about minus 25 dB. You can also see that it's shifted off center just a little bit. Now, it didn't plot, but we can always add. One of the things that we're always interested in with a quadrature hybrid is the ratio of the phase of S31 and S21. So we'll plot the phase here. And at three gigahertz, we expect the phase relationship to be pretty close to 90 degrees. Let's put some markers in here. So we can see S21 has a phase of about 80.7 degrees and S31 has a phase of about minus 6.5 degrees. Uh, so we're you know at about 88.2 degrees, uh, getting pretty close to 90. But again, uh, we're just off by a little bit. Uh, and this has to do with the fact that uh, when we uh, did the physical layout uh, of the structure uh, caused some differences that weren't accounted for in the schematic simulation. And of course we could optimize the structure to try and gain that phase balance back. All right, so this is uh, full. Th this is uh, how to do a layout simulation uh, based upon uh, a schematic design in uh, ADS. Now, you don't have to have a schematic design in order to do a layout simulation. You can just generically draw shapes, add ports, and run the same type of simulation. Uh, and of course, your substrates can get more complex. Uh, so here we just have our, our simple two layer uh, substrate that we were simulating uh, a microstrip structure on. Uh, but you can have much more complicated structures with multiple layers and uh, of dielectric and multiple layers of conductors and vias connecting things. And, uh, and, and you can also have uh, non conductive boundaries. Uh, so all of these things are possible. Uh, and we'll cover some of those things in future uh, videos. For the time being, I'll sign off and say thanks for watching.